Hi, my name is Dan. Here in the Peralta Labs, we have a number of pieces of test equipment. Today, I'd like to talk just a little bit about the oscilloscope. And uh, as an electrical engineer or as electronics tech, you're going to be expected to take uh, measurements and to look at signals with an oscilloscope. Today, I'd like to go over just the four basic sections, basically, of every single scope that's out there. Whether the scope happens to be an old analog scope, or whether the scope is more modern digital scope. Okay, before we uh, talk about the uh, vertical, horizontal, trigger, and display section, just a little note to you about the scope. The scope is a, an instrument used for measuring voltages. The scope inherently in itself is safe, so you don't have to worry about if you're going to touch one of the probes or something when they're not connected, there isn't any voltage coming from the scope that can hurt you. However, if, if you're working with high voltages, there might be something after you connect the probe, but the scope itself, when it's standalone by itself, there isn't any really safety concern for you in terms of operating the scope. So don't be afraid of uh, uh, touching the panel and so forth on the scope or the display on the scope. There's nothing really there that can hurt you. Okay, now we'll uh, kind of start talking about the different sections. Okay, the first thing I'd like to start with today is uh, talking about the first section I mentioned in the introduction, the vertical section. Vertical is used to measure the height or the amplitude of a particular signal. On our scope, we actually have four different inputs that we can use for measuring four different signals at the same time, assuming they have the same ground reference. Today, we'll just be using the first channel or channel number one, and I have hooked up the probe of the scope onto a sine wave source. To turn the channel on, I just press the one button for channel one, and you notice that on comes my sine wave of my signal. First two knobs I want to talk about are, the first one is the position. So I can move the signal up and down on the screen. And you notice that tracking along with the signal, if you're not able to see this in the video, there's a little ground reference there telling us that ground is right at that point. And I can move that up and down the screen. <clears throat> we'll explain a little later why we, why we might want to do that. The second knob that we have is the volts per division. And you notice that my screen is divided into these little vertical divisions. And so when I adjust this knob, what it does is it changes not only the size of the signal, but it changes how much each one of those divisions is worth. In this particular case where I have the knob set right now, even though you may not be able to see it, it tells me on the scope that that is one volt for each one of these divisions, okay? If I adjust the knob to make my signal bigger, now it's telling me that each one of these divisions is 500 millivolts, okay? So, that's the two kind of important knobs here in the vertical is changing the size. Now, when we go to actually measure a signal, we want to try to use the maximum number of divisions on the screen. That gives us the most accurate measurement that we can have on that channel. So always crank it up, but you don't want to go off screen like in this example where we're going off the screen, so we're going to turn it back down. Now, I would like to know what is the amplitude of this particular signal, or how, how big is my signal? To do that, I'm going to use my position knob, the first one that I talked about. I'm going to lower this down so that the bottom of my trough right here is right on that first radical line coming up. So now to measure the height of this particular signal, uh, after I set that on there, You'll notice that I come up from here to get to the top, I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, approximately five divisions. Five divisions times each division being worth 500 millivolts per division tells me that this signal right here is approximately 2.5 volts peak to peak. So I'm going from the bottom of the trough to the top of the trough, approximately 2.5 volts peak to peak. <clears throat> Again, I don't want to try to use a small signal like this and, oh, now I'm at one division and this looks like about two volts peak to peak. The more of the screen that we use, the more accurate the measurement. 
Now, some people, if you've used a scope before, might be saying, well, why don't I just use the built-in measurement system that's already in the scope? And most modern digital scopes have a measurement system in there. You notice that our sine wave looks pretty clean, looks like a nice sine wave. That isn't always true in the real world. When you're out in the field, this signal is usually corrupted by noise. And so noise can mess up the internal measurement system of the scope, or perhaps you're using a scope that doesn't have a measurement system with it. You want to be able to know how to measure what the amplitude is out without having some sort of digital read out of that. Again, what you always do, set a reference, count the number of divisions, multiply the number of divisions times what each division is worth, and there's your voltage peak to peak, okay? Now, hopefully in your classes, you've covered how to convert peak to peak into peak voltage, RMS voltage, or average voltage. That's a topic for another day, but for the scope, we're just going to be taking this measurement here as a peak to peak value. So that's kind of the vertical section, the two main parts. Now, a couple other things in vertical that we want to just briefly mention is that sometimes uh, we have in electronics, we have an AC signal riding on a DC signal. Perhaps in one of your classes, you build a power supply where you're making a DC voltage come out of the power supply, but yet on the power supply, there's an AC voltage riding on the DC. If I want to see both the AC signal and the DC voltage at the same time, I would DC couple the scope. So there's a little button here for changing the coupling to DC. If I just wanted to see the AC ripple that's riding on top of the DC signal, then I would change the coupling and I would change that to AC. <clears throat> it's really common in electronics to have multiple signal or mixed signals on the same wire pair. So that's a handy feature, how to separate. Remember, when you're on DC coupling, you're looking at both the DC signal and the AC signal. When you're on AC coupling, you're only seeing the AC signal and not the DC signal. Okay, next thing I just want to briefly mention is the impedance of the probe. Whenever you're making a measurement in a circuit, you are disturbing the circuit. So what we'd like to do is, if we're measuring a circuit, is we'd always like to make sure that our instruments are higher impedance, at least by 10 times, of what the actual circuit that we're measuring in. So this gives us an opportunity to change the impedance. Generally, for your labs and your classes here, you're going to leave this set on one mega ohm. If we were doing some radio frequency work, then you might make this change to down into 50 ohms. But for all of your stuff, leave this at one mega ohm. Now, since we actually have a probe on here that is actually a 10 times probe, it actually multiplies that and it's actually 10 mega ohms is our real input impedance for this scope. Bandwidth limit is a limitation the manufacturer can put in there as to what's the highest frequency that I can accept into that channel when I turn that on. Typically it's around 20 megahertz, but you'd have to see the specification from each manufacturer for what that bandwidth limit is. I'm not going to talk about fine, but we'll talk about the invert, and all invert does is flip the signal over. Okay, so that's, that's all that invert does on that. And in a future video, we'll talk a little bit about the probes and the probe compensation. Okay, so that's kind of the vertical section, again, used for measuring the amplitude of a signal. The next section that I want to talk about is the horizontal section. Now, typically in a signal, we'd like to know the two important things about a signal. What is the amplitude and what is the frequency? On a scope, we don't have a way to directly measure the frequency. What we're actually going to be measuring on the horizontal section is time. And you know from the studies in your classes that time of one cycle is related to the frequency by one over. So if I want to know the frequency of the signal, all I can do is take one over the time of one cycle, and that'll give me the frequency for it. So on the horizontal section, we basically kind of have the same two basic controls. I can change 
how many cycles are occurring by changing the time per division knob. So remember before we had the volts per division, now we have the time per division. So going across horizontally here, we have these divisions. When I rotate this knob, I'm making those divisions work more. And that, if you may not be able to see it, but it's displayed right here in the scope. Right now it's telling me that each one of these divisions is worth 20 nanoseconds of time. When I rotate the knob back one, now it tells me that each division on here is worth 50 nanoseconds of time. <clears throat> I can move the uh, position of my waveform along here, just like I did with the vertical section. So let's say that I wanted to, uh, I wanted to know how much time is one cycle so that I could calculate the frequency. And so first thing I want to do though, you notice that my, my waveform isn't symmetrical. In other words, I've got it shifted. So I'm going to go back to my vertical section and I'm going to move the ground reference right here to the center. So I'm centered, so I have an equal amount on the top and an equal amount on the bottom. Again, I want to use the maximum I can of my screen, but you see if I turn it here, I'm kind of off screen a little bit. So I'm going to back it up one. When I back it up one, it tells me that each division is worth 50 nanoseconds of time. So I'm now going to pick some arbitrary point, and I think I'm just going to pick where it starts to go up, and I want to follow just one cycle of my waveform. I'm going to shift it over so that I see, okay, I'm starting right here, and I want to follow my waveform and come back to that exact same point. How many divisions is that? One, two, three, four divisions. Each division is worth 50 nanoseconds. So that tells me that one cycle of this AC signal is four times 50, or 200 nanoseconds of time, okay? Now, of course, to get the frequency, all I have to do is take one and divide it by 200 nanoseconds, and that would give me the frequency of my AC signal. Why don't I just use the building frequency display of the scope? Well, first, my scope may not have it. Second, this signal might be corrupted with a lot of noise, and that noise will be giving us a false reading for what the actual frequency of the signal is. Okay? So, very, very similar to the vertical section, the horizontal section, except now we're measuring time rather than amplitude or time versus voltage, okay? <clears throat> the next uh, section that I'd like to talk to you about is one that's kind of confusing to a lot of people, and that's the trigger section. And what trigger means is, where do I want to start tracing out my particular signal at, okay? So I'm gonna kind of move my signal over a little bit here using the horizontal position knob, and there's a section here on the scope labeled trigger, just like there was for vertical and horizontal, the one for trigger. And the first thing you have to do when you go to trigger is, what channel do I want to trigger off of? Well, since we're only using channel one, I'm going to use channel one as my trigger source. So you see here, my source here for that. <clears throat> In this particular case, I have it selected so that I have a rising edge. And this scope has a bunch of different triggering options for the edges. So I'm going to use an edge on a rising, rising waveform. Now, a lot of times uh, what, what we're talking about triggers, where am I going to start tracing out my particular signal? And you'll notice on this particular scope, there's a little T over here to the side. That tells me the value of the voltage or the voltage position of where I'm going to start triggering. And you can see, as I move the trigger knob, you see that I'm tracing along different points, or I'm telling the scope at different points where to start tracing out the signal. Now, one of the problems that many students have is the trigger level gets beyond the signal. So I'm going to take the trigger level up above, and what happens? The scope loses synchronization because I'm telling it to trigger somewhere where there is no signal. So if I have a waveform like this, one of two things, I'm usually set up with either the wrong source for triggering or I have my trigger level set wrong. 
So watch what happens as I bring the trigger level down. Now my waveform goes back to a nice stable waveform. And this works on both the, both the upper and the lower. If I go too low with the trigger level, again, you'll see what happens. The, the scope loses synchronization and it doesn't know where to start tracing out the signal at. So again, I, all you gotta do is bring the trigger level back into the range of amplitude on the actual signal, okay? So that's a very important part there in trigger. There's a number of trigger options for canceling out noise and so forth on the trigger signal. You can also trigger from external sources or other internal sources of the scope. But basically trigger tells us where do I want to start tracing out the waveform, okay? And as I mentioned, the last section of the scope that we want to just briefly mention today is generally the display section, and, and every scope has those. On older analog scopes, they included things like how bright is my display, or am, is my display within focus? So they usually had an intensity knob to turn up the brightness, and they had a focus knob. Some of your classmates may want to fool you and turn the intensity all the way down, and then you can never see a signal why? Because somebody goofed around with the scope and turned the intensity all the way down. You think there's something wrong with the scope, but what really needs to happen is just the intensity turned up. On this particular scope, there's a, a button here. Some of them just have a knob, but on this one it has a little button here. So we can turn the waveform intensity and you'll kind of see it slide around or get dimmer and brighter as I move that along on the line, okay? This particular scope, uh, at least I haven't found it yet, it doesn't have focus on it, but a lot of the older ones have a focus knob as well. There may be other features associated with, but intensity is always an important one when you're dealing with the scope. This particular scope has on the display section, also has, so you can change like the, how bright the grid is. There's persistence and all kinds of other things that are on there. And so those, uh, today I just want to kind of cover just the four basic sections of every single oscilloscope. Again, the vertical section, the horizontal section, the trigger section, and the display section. In future videos, we'll try to discuss a few more of the other options on our particular scope that might be of use to you and your classes.